Hey everyone, Jason here with STS. I just finished another Touch IC repair on an iPhone 6 Plus and I wanted to share uh, my experience here and what I know about this issue so far. Um, when I first uh, ran into this, it was actually on an iPhone 6 and I had it in my head that um, this is an issue that occurs on the 6 and 6 Plus. Well, as it turns out, I'm only running into this issue on iPhone 6 with physically damaged phones. When it comes to the iPhone 6 Plus, I have just as many phones come through here that have no sign of being dropped, um, no signs of wear and tear. This phone here is just absolutely perfect, yet it came in with the, the flickering gray bar at the top and, and no touch. So um, I've had this theory for a while that the Mason Touch I see is largely responsible for this gray bar and no touch. So today I've been uh, kind of toying with it a little bit because I, I had to. Um, this phone here, um, I started out with just doing the Mason IC and everything seemed fine. However, the touch was really, really, really flaky. Uh, it would seem perfect, but then all of a sudden it would seem flaky. So I went ahead and tried again with a couple of known good working screens and it was definitely the phone. So I thought, well, shit, everybody's right. It, you know, that the Cumulus IC has a lot to do with this too. So I've replaced the Cumulus IC and same exact problem, same areas of the screen with issues. So what I've ran into um, is a defective Mason IC right out of my package. Now, it, it doesn't happen very often. Normally, I drop a chip on these things and they're fixed. This isn't a repair that we have coming back, so I, I know we're doing good work on it. Um, we send them out of here with the front camera working, back camera, proximity sensor, ambient light sensor, all the audio, both directions, top and bottom mic, um, everything works. The proximity sensor works. So we're doing good repairs here, but um, I'm seeing that some people change the Cumulus and the Mason I see just no matter what. Uh, and I'm not sure what, you know, what chain of troubleshooting they're taking to arrive at that point. So today when I ran into this issue, I thought, well, they're right. So I went ahead and did the Cumulus IC as well. And it didn't make any difference at all in this phone. What I wound up doing was going back and putting another Mason IC on it and fix the phone. This phone works beautifully with all of its functions working perfectly. So I've had this theory that um, the Mason IC, I don't have the number right here in front of me, but I've had this theory that it, it was to blame. And I just, I wanted to share this experience here. I've ran into a defective Mason IC and um, hardly ever have to replace the Cumulus IC unless the phone's actually damaged. So I really feel like uh, largely this is the Mason IC causing this. Now I might be totally wrong, but I fix oh anywhere between two and five of these per week now. And that's been my experience. Um, Mason Touch IC, I think they're a pile of garbage. Um, you know, that, that specific chip from Texas Instruments, um, I, I believe is the culprit here. Now I might be wrong, I might eat my words here because I've got a, another one still yet here to do today, but um, I just wanted to get this out there. I know a lot of shops are doing both chips no matter what. Um, I might start doing both chips no matter what, but I really feel like that might be more risk to the phone because it's, it's more heat. The Cumulus IC is almost directly on the bottom of the processor, whereas the Mason IC, Mason IC it's a little bit north <laughs> from the processor. So uh, the Cumulus IC really is more risky to change. If you don't have to change it, you could save yourself a lot of heartache uh, tracking down shit that don't work after you change it. Or you could even wind up hard bricking a phone, um, I meaning like a, a dead short. If you get that processor too hot and the solder underneath the processor s swells out of the underfill, you're buying a device. You, it, it's screwed. So if you don't have to replace the Cumulus IC, I don't think it's worth doing it just in case it might be bad. That Cumulus IC, the Broadcom chip, that is in iPhone 5C, iPhone 5S, 6, 6 Plus. I'm not sure if it's in the 6S and 6S Plus, but um, that chip clearly don't have any problems because iPhone 5Cs, iPhone 5Ss, they get dropped just as much. I mean, dude, <laughs> they get bent hard and you don't run into this widespread defect. So I'm still still a little bit on the fence as to what, what the actual cause of this is. It's a little, really, I'm not entirely convinced that it's from bending because I see a lot of phones that are not bent with this problem. Um, however, that it kind of goes against my argument to see that iPhone 6 Plus has this widespread defect, even, you know, even without any visible signs of, of, of damage, 
the iPhone 6 Plus has this defect and it is just, it is widespread. It's widespread to the point where almost every time I bring in an iPhone 6 Plus for a screen replacement, um, I'm just puckered up. Like, is, is this new screen actually going to fix it? So I always got to spend a good deal of time with them to decide if this phone's going to have other issues or not. So it's a real pain in the ass, but um, I just wanted to share my experiences with this repair. Um, I'm highly successful at it. I don't have any returns because I make damn sure everything's right. Uh, I might eat my words. I mean, I don't typically have any returns. Watch me get five this week just because I said that. But anyways, that's my experience with this repair. The Mason I see, I believe, has a defect rate that's really high. I think repair shops that replace that chip only and have a phone come back either have a physically damaged Cumulus IC or what they're doing is actually from there, they're replacing both of them just to be safe. Or maybe they replace the Cumulus and then them reheating the Mason actually gets it, it working again long enough for them to say that it's fixed. Um, but honestly, I think the real culprit here is that, um, that uh, the Texas Instruments chip, the TIS, 343 so I, I, I read that number every day but since I'm on video I, I can't remember the number off the top of my head but all of you out there that are doing this repair uh, you know which chip I'm talking about so anyways another successful touch IC repair this phone it had issues um, just below the top of the screen so whenever you would drop drop the bar down here in the middle we would lose touch all over the place up here and after it would lose after after it would drop this touch the whole screen wouldn't work like there was no touch until you blank the screen and then turn the phone back on so um i replaced the cumulus ic same bullshit i replaced the mason ic again and it fixed it and during that process i also inspected all of the capacitors that are responsible for the capacitive touch i heard some people online calling it the trailer park because it's like this whole line of capacitors um but i've inspected all that closely i know all the other connections um to the digitizer connector or sound is you know as far as i can see and i can see really well with this microscope so here again i've narrowed it down to that damn mason ic and this time it trolled me a little bit i replaced cumulus no difference um it was the mason ic and i had pulled a defective one off of my spool so you know there's another one in the pile for the defect rate on those texas instruments mason ic's that are in the iphone 6 and the 6 plus um, but as far as how widespread this is, it's really bizarre that it's isolated to the 6 Plus because, you know, the 6 and the 6 Plus had the same exact chip. So maybe it does have something to do with right where the board flexes. I don't know. I know how to fix it, but I'm not 100% sure what causes this because every time I want to think that it's bending, a phone comes in that looks like this one that is just absolutely flawless. I mean, it, it's perfectly straight, yet I'm sitting here replacing touch ICs. So I don't know if you'll learn anything from this. I might look like an idiot, but this is my experience. I fix a lot of this and um, that's the way this one went. So I started to second guess my theory and here I go, defective Mason IC. So I'll keep sending these back to you guys working, stand behind my work 100%, but nobody really knows exactly what's causing this. And there's a lot of theories being tossed around and I think the widespread belief is bendage, but what if the phone's not bent? Have a good day, everybody.